Kerry Holly. I at, Ap at Optum, I'm a technology fellow where I have a role around emerging technologies and, and helping the company at large, uh, key executives and business units advance their technology intelligence. Uh, largely that's in artificial intelligence, but also it includes ancillary complementary uh, technologies like graph, ambient, IoT, uh, and other uh, types of technologies. So uh, in addition to that responsibility, I also lead some workforce transformation activities for the organization as well. Optum, um, as many people may know, is part of United Health Group. United Health Group is our parent, is, I say our parent company, but it is one company called United Health Group. United Health Group has two platforms. One of those platforms is UHC, United Health Care. United Health Care provides insurance services and payer services. And then there's Optum. Optum is the healthcare innovation arm. That's the platform. And when we talk about what Optum is, Optum has several services. It has a pharmacy service, very much like CVS, except ours is mail order. Uh, we have a, a PBM uh, service as part of the, uh, the pharmacy. We, um, we have something called Optum Insight, which provides uh, various analytical and computational uh, uh, services that we sell to hospitals. We have Care, Optum Care, which actually has clinics where you go in and actually get clinical care. I think the, uh, the pain points that we see are, are pretty typical. Everyone's uh, heard about the, uh, the triple aim and that's something that we continue to try to do uh, better and be, get better at that triple aim in terms of reducing costs, uh, improving patient experience, um, improving the uh, health of the population. So those three things are, are continue to be top of mind for us. And to a large degree, how do we get ahead of those things is a lot of what we focus on and how do we actually make people live um, healthier lives. You know, with the advent of this pandemic with COVID, uh, we've seen, uh, I think this is across the nation and world, we've seen a rise in telehealth. So that's uh, good for a number of reasons. One is that it's making healthcare more ubiquitous, uh, more accessible to a larger swath of the population. So that's, that's a big positive. It's um, also showed us that we can move faster and it has caused us to move faster in terms of some activities we do around digitization. Uh, because of the uh, nature of telehealth, it's bringing costs down in some areas. It's um, uh, fixing some age. I mean, people uh, generally are always able to make their appointments now. Uh, and, and as I said, it's making healthcare more ubiquitous. So I think that there's been some um, uh, advancements in terms of the opportunities for digitization uh, in terms of helping the, the population at, our, at large and clinicians see that this is actually viable, that they can actually do business this way, that they don't always have to have the patient in their office, in their um, clinical setting to derive good outcomes. We touch pretty much every aspect of the healthcare system. So our innovations um, are, are quite uh, range and, I, and I'm sure I'm not gonna do them all justice. Uh, for example, uh, and I'm just doing these off the top of my head, but uh, clinical coding is a pain point for uh, physicians and, and clinicians and being able to uh, automate that to eliminate the need for uh, that activity to be manual based to reduce the errors is something that we've been doing with deep learning and natural language processing. So that's, that's an example of an innovation. Uh, being able to have a nurse who's at a patient's home and being able to have um, speech to text translation, to be able to have a nurse instead of going through thousands of, maybe thousands is too large, but hundreds of voicemails to be able to have that um, transcribed and, and not just transcribed, but uh, the nurse only gets the information that's pertinent to uh, providing care. Uh, so that, that's, an, that's an innovation. Uh, being able to reduce and accelerate admissions um, using uh, artificial intelligence and deep learning. Being able to um, create a graph of our population and be able to see uh, trends, uh, being able to predict whether you or I or some part of the population is going to have Alzheimer's, is going to have diabetes, or maybe um, in the case of, uh, of COVID, uh, we've been able to uh, uh, piggyback on some work that we've done with the flu called FluCast, where with FluCast we're able to predict uh, you know, where outbreaks of the flu will be. And similarly, we can do the same thing with COVID. 
um, uh, what else? Uh, making claims uh, go faster in real time. Uh, another innovation, being able to reduce what may have uh, taken weeks into minutes is, uh, is pretty significant. So um, there's a long list of innovations in terms of reducing costs, making the workforce more productive, um, making clinical care uh, better, uh, improving the customer experience. Uh, some of the ways of improving customer experiences is with speaker uh, you know, devices where you and I maybe um, we're looking at someone more senior in age and they can use their voice to schedule an appointment or to check on their benefits, things like that. So um, I could go on and, and and all of them center around that triple lane. There's just a ton of, of, of things we can uh, uh, drill down on as we as we look at those objectives.